Hi, and welcome to episode two of Shakedown. I hope you're well. I almost didn't have a topic to talk about this week, but then it hit me, Valentine's Day. It's the one day of year, even though it's commercialized, where we celebrate being with our loved ones. And it's the day that single people, well, most single people absolutely dread. So I thought I'd talk about that and as well as other things. On this week's show, I'm gonna talk about men's attitudes and mindsets to Valentine's Day, the most extravagant gifts ever received on Valentine's Day, and what should single men do on Valentine's Day. And I will reveal who is my extraordinary person of the week. Uh, it's a new title now. I told you I would actually have a better title than last week's podcast. So, with that in mind, I thought I'd start off on talking about men's attitudes to Valentine's Day. Now, let's be real. It is a nice day. Let's be real about this. We need a little bit of love in the world. And with all that's going on recently, you know, with Trump, with how things are in in terms of international relationships and all that stuff, we need a little bit of love. We need to show people that we love them. And even though we don't need a day to do it, you know, we need to create more happy memories. So, you know, I think it's a good, it's a good thing to do. Um, it's just a chance to, you know, do a little bit to kind of make each other smile. Um, even though that this is only one day, <laughs> um, it does mean a lot to people. You know, a simple text here. Um, giving flowers there, all that kind of stuff. It just makes a world of a difference, even though we should do it every day. But I can understand why some people don't get caught up in the magic of Valentine's Day, especially with the when they're with someone for a long time, or if they're single, you know. Um, but there, even though that there is good parts to Valentine's Day, there is bad parts to Valentine's Day. Something interesting came to me, well, was put to me, um, and domestic violence in the USA, um, someone actually pointed this out to me, that most people on Valentine's Day reminds them of being single, um, even so in the UK, um, even around the world, for that matter. But there's people that's actually gone through domestic violence, and... If they get caught up in the magic of Valentine's Day, they're going to end up missing that person, even though that they abuse them. Uh, Even if they've got children, it's going to get a lot harder and everything. Um, But I know that there's single people who's got children who develop themselves well, um, even though they had a lot of bad things going. I've known a few. I've met a few. Um, It's as simple as that, really. It's kind of a shame how some people actually view Valentine's Day. Um, shout out to my friend that actually pointed out to me because I didn't know that story to be honest. I sat down there and I thought, wow, if that can go on down there, it can go down anywhere. That, let's be real with about that. But I sat down there thinking to myself that why would you want to do that to people? Why do you want to turn things into an ugly relationship? And I'm sitting down here thinking to myself that we all need to kind of respect and love one another a relationship is never easy it doesn't matter if you're gay straight bi whatever whatever relationship that you have it's never easy and i think that you got to try and do your best that you can to kind of be with somebody and be with someone take someone on face value um communicate and just trying to be with them and try and understand them and i think that that's the best thing to do so why would go why would that go to that sort of level but i don't know it's kind of crazy how how some relationships have ended i'm not gonna read out a few but you know um some of the things that i've read about is kind of harrowing um and it's never nice and i just don't think that that's what should happen it should never get to that point but let's get not but down with all the seriousness of valentine's day 
Um, I'm sure that some men have give, given it, um, have done things wrong, but I just think that um, they do need to kind of, you know, wise up and just kind of remember about what it's about being with somebody. And uh, yeah, it's just kind of, uh, just kind of, let's remember that to think about the person. Let's try and let's try and be more of great men to our partners. You know, it's 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 kind of unfair that they kind of do everything for us, it, like for most people, and we haven't done anything for them. Um, it's just try and just show them that we do care and we do appreciate them and everything. So I think that's probably the best thing that we need to do. Right. So moving on now. If you are single, and the notion of Valentine's Day kind of makes you dread it, uh, the the endless <laughs> red and white um, uh, graffiti, not graffiti, um, confetti, and all that kind of stuff, cheesy love songs and all the rest of it. Um, I just think that you shouldn't really worry about finding somebody on Valentine's Day. You shouldn't worry because relationships happen naturally and it you can meet somebody just like that in these days. Um, even if you're meeting somebody online, even if like let's not let's let's be real about what we're doing here. You know, you shouldn't get disgruntled. You shouldn't post a uh, post or tweet everybody say how much you're single and how much you haven't had um, any sex or any love in a long time and everything. I truly believe that there is somebody out there for everybody, and you know it shouldn't get to desperate times, desperate measures kind of thing. It should be just kind of thinking that, yeah, this is a day where it's a significant day, but you like obviously you do have to treat it as a normal day, but you shouldn't let it let thing let it get to your head. Single men out there, I implore you, don't try to keep on having to chase people out there on Valentine's Day because it's like I know you get caught up in the day and everything, but by all means, go out and try and meet people, by all means. But let's try and just um, remember that love isn't forced. Relationship isn't forced. It doesn't, it, like, Rome wasn't built in a day. So let's try and be remembering about what we need to do. So I'm going to move on here. Just put this book down because I had my, uh, the two previous segments actually um, recorded. So I'm going to um, look on the internet here, and I've been reading about this in the last few days, um, even though I was busy doing other things. And uh, I'm going to move on to the most expensive gay, expensive gifts, <laughs> um, forgive me, the most expensive Valentine's gifts. And um, I thought, thought, thought I'd just talk about a few of these, um, a few of these uh, things to say. If you were rich, what would you give? to your partner what would you do um and i just thought i'd just get caught up in what's been an offer here so i read up on this um, website it's called uh katawi the uh, katawiki.com and um, they had an article kit here that says the 10 the top five most expensive valentine's day gifts and i uh, looked on a few of these for and i thought how crazy is this? So I looked on these sunglasses. Uh, it's it's by Chopard de Rigo Vision, and it's it's they say it's a perfect gift. So the sunglasses are produced by luxury companies uh, de Rigo Vision and Chopard, and the end of the glasses are decorated in 60 grams of 24k gold. I'm just going to leave that there for a second. It's 24k gold. And the arms contain dotted gold around the C logo, and it's surrounded by 51 river diamonds. Now, if you're if you're the kind of person that actually likes to wear sunglasses and everything, this is this is kind of really really pretty to actually wear and everything. But uh, I don't know if I could wear wear this. <laughs> I'll be afraid if I break them, let alone wear them. Um, so you probably want to know what the cost is. There's no way to suffer in the blow on this one. I'm just going to come out with it and say it is $340,000. It's jaw-dropping. It's crazy. Um, it gets worse. <laughs> it 
Right. So, um, there was this pen. And now you know that you can buy a pen at a store for a good quid, maybe less. But this one's really, really interesting. <laughs> so, uh, so this pen, uh, it's a limited edition mystery masterpiece pen. It was created in collaboration with luxury brands, Mont Blanc, Van Ch Blanc, excuse me, let me get this right, Van Cleef and, and Arpels. And the pen is decorated in 840 diamonds and contains more than 20 carats 20 carats of gemstones of your choice so you can pick emeralds you can pick diamonds you can pick sapphires and it's a it's a timely gift and as i look on it now it's a thing of beauty um i see some diamonds encrusted around in the like at the tip of the pen there's like a really big diamond could be a sapphire to be honest but i looked on it and um this is the same website uh, as well by the way and uh i saw it and <laughs> I couldn't even write on I couldn't even use it to write it it's probably going to be there for decoration purposes but if someone actually bought that for me and and everything I'll be like I'll be like I'm I can't use this for work or anything it'll be dec it'll be on decorations only but uh, again this is not going to this is not going to be easy um uh, to for me to kind of take as a gift if I was presented with one of these um, but the price on this one is six hundred thousand dollars. Oh, that's a crazy amount of money. Um, right. So the same website, and this is uh, number three on their list. Uh, it's uh, the same person that done the the glasses, Chapar or Chapard. And uh, and normally what I to, normally it's a watch, and I I do like a good watch, you know. Um, I, I wish I kind of wear my watch a bit more often, but because of what I do and everything, it's not really possible. Um, so, so yeah, there's toy, there's a watch, and uh, basically it's it's the, it's diamond encrusted. And as I look at it now, it's very very you can tell it's just expensive. It's it's ridiculous, um, and it's not just an ordinary watch. The, the 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 watch is actually decorated with 874 diamonds, and it's got a very unusual hues and special shapes, um, and it's giving it like a flowery flowery kind of look really, um, and uh, it's, uh, it's the, the the spring mechanism on the watch is it's heart shaped as well. It's like open like a flower um, to reveal the dial, and it just tells the time. Um, so they do um, ladies and men's watches, but but this one it's just it's just crazy. Um, so this one, this watch in particular that I'm looking at, it's twenty million dollars, twenty million for one watch, um, and it's 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 very very it's very very um, very very nice. Um, I can imagine giving that to somebody, and they were like what it's, it's insane it's insane right now uh for all the ladies out there that are listening to this podcast um we got this handbag and uh, i know a lot of ladies like love handbags um like uh, and sometimes when i look at some people's handbags and and i try to think what are they using it for and how much stuff they got in it they got um Mirrors, makeup sets, pens, gums, not gums, to like just uh, like wrapped in, but you know what I mean, just wrapped around it like um, normal chewing gums and everything, in like uh, and everything. And you put you probably put drinks in there, whatever it is. But uh, this one, you're probably not gonna probably put a few bits in there. Um, you probably put like probably a makeup bag and 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 a mirror really but this one is a heart shaped one so all the ladies out there that's listening to this you'd be pleased to know that there's a heart shaped one and uh, it is uh, it is by the house of Moad and um, it's called the bag's called 101 Knights Diamonds Purse uh, it is the most expensive and the most expensive 
exclusive bag you can find on the market and basically it's got 4,517 yellow and pink transparent diamonds adding up to a whopping 38,192 carats. The bag is actually made by 10 different designers and they actually spent over 8,000 hours together in creating this one. It really, really, really is a thing of beauty to be honest. Um, uh, I'm not even a handbag person and everything, but even I would like actually marvel at this and the level of um, precise delicacy that actually went to this. Um, it's actually quite brilliant. It really is. It really is. Um, <laughs> right, so this one, this one, it's going to cost you $3.1 million. It's, it's really, really remarkable, but it's, if you're rich, it's kind of worth it, really, just to see the look on, on, on a woman's face if you actually gave them the handbag. Now, this is kind of more up my street and if I was given a Valentine's Day um, gift, money no object, what I would do is, is uh, I would be wanting to have a car, is wanting to have a car and to, ha to have a car I would want something very very special and this one is called uh, the Bugatti Chiron. Now, I know a little bit about Bugattis. I haven't driven one, but I would love to be driven one. Um, we all know about the Veyron, and uh, that's the most expensive car in the world. This one has a W16 engine, a W16 engine, uh, quad turbochargers, and it actually has 1,500 brake horsepower. So it will. It, it really is. Really is a, a, a crazy car for me. And this will, And this would be my gift. And this is number one on the list on the Katawiki website. And it is two point one million dollars. Two point one. And that would be more like my street. Like you imagine if I was actually um, being presented that I would have my eyes closed my hands across my face and then they go open them and I see the car and I'll be like yes <laughs> it'd be crazy so um yeah it's actually in my color as well my favorite color is blue and it's in a gorgeous blue color it's got um sort of brown brownish kind of goldish uh um level of upholstery um the the insides is just it's crazy you can actually um you can actually uh the gears for example you can put it into manual setting you can put it into automatic setting it's got a lot of te tech on there and everything it's it's really really brilliant really really brilliant so yeah let me know what you guys think of that um like i'm sure you guys are going for the cheaper option really but uh, uh that would be my top five uh, most extraordinary gifts that would be ever getting um right so we're going to move on and i'm going to talk about um men's uh what 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 and the best kind of stories and and there's something i did look upon um the other day and i can't seem to find it there was this story that i read i'm just looking for it just now um Let's have a look. There was this interesting story that that um, that that was popped out, and uh, it's on the Regis Digest website, and I just got it here now, and uh, this one like kind of got to me, um, and I'm going to read out this story. So during World War II, my parents had planned a romantic Valentine's Day wedding. Suddenly, my father was stationed out in Camp Edwards in Massachusetts, received orders to prepare to ship out, and, and all leaves were cancelled. And then, being a young man in love, he went AWOL. Uh, he and my mother were married four days earlier than originally planned, and then he returned to base, an angry sergeant. 
After hearing the explanation, the sergeant went. The sergeant um, understandably replied, okay, okay. Then, and as an afterthought, he said, don't let it happen again. <laughs> I guess when you um, when you think about like people and they got this Valentine's Day and sometimes, right, you have to kind of think to yourself, what are you going to do to kind of get yourself worked around a certain situation, even though you have to be determined and devoted enough to be with the person that you love? Um, and I thought, and I just sat down there and I read that one. Uh, it's by Sandra L. Caron, by the way. And uh, I looked at it, and I just kind of think to myself, that's that's true love right there. You know, having to having to put um, yourself before your before your work. And I'm I'm at the stage of life that if I was to if I was to be in his shoes, I would be doing the same thing to be honest trying to do whatever I could to get myself, even though if it would get me in trouble and everything, it's worth it, it's worth it, um, to be honest, so that, I thought I'd just share that with you, um, right, um, I'm going to talk about uh, single people and why they dread, why they dread um, Valentine's Day, and Valentine's Day Yes, it's a day where people are lovey-dovey and, you know, they're holding hands and, you know, they're kissing on the street, public displays of affection and everything, you know, and we have to share a little bit of love, you know, but I think I, I do kind of want to try and get to the point now where single people, what should you do on Valentine's Day if you don't really want to be around all of that? So, um, single people should try and take take the day as i said as normal what they should do they should go out and explore things you know try and take your mind off things you know try and do your normal day-to-day -day routine if you can um but if you want to really really push the boat out and try to you know do something else go to the gym try and go try and get your mind right you know Go to go go and read a book, read a book on something that's actually gonna like not make you think about what's going on in your situation. Um, as I said before, don't post on social media that you're you're single, you're looking and everything. That just shows complete desperation, you know. Don't show that you're uh, put yourself out there, and then you end up getting yourself into a situation where you cannot get out of. Um, as I said. It's good, like we we meet people at a moment's choosing. It's not when you choose to. It's at a moment's choosing, and you know you can bump into somebody, and you never know that person can end up a very very special person in your life. So I think single people should actually be wary of what what they need to do. Um, I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just giving you some options about what you could do. You know. Um, if you're single for a long time and everything and you're you're embracing that and you understand that you know please don't get so disgruntled but don't get so disheartened at the fact that you can't find somebody everybody can find somebody you know you just don't know when and you don't know how it's going to happen it's all part of life really and uh, i think that board try not to let everybody know about that just try and do the best you can spend time with your family you know like you, you can't pick your friends but to, like you know be with your friends if they if they're single and everything go out and see a film together or go out to dinner together you know um go and do things go and do things that's actually going to make you feel good instead of make you feel bad do things like that i'm just i'm just throwing it out there and just trying to um put yourself into I'm just putting myself into a single person's shoes, what would they would do, you know, so I just hope that you can help with your situation. Right, I'm going to move on, and uh, I'm going to end this end this one uh, with uh, the Extraordinary Person of the Week. Now, I've gone through the internet for a few days or so, and I wanted to find a very, very good story. Um, to tell you about to award my extraordinary person of the week 
Um, and I come for a 14 year old boy and a boy, and his name is, if I can find it, Cody Michelin. Michelin. I hope I pronounced his name right. Uh, it's on the Good Housekeeping website. And um, basically, he's 14 years old and he came by to he came by and he wanted to mow uh neighbors lawns and he would do it for five dollars a piece so so he 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 was asked um why are you mowing the lawns and he replied with i'd like to take my girlfriend out to lunch tomorrow because i don't have enough money so he's been going door to door getting in business so he can make enough money so he can take his girlfriend out. So he, he was busting his ass, mowing lawns, sweeping sidewalks, and he made enough to take her out to lunch and get her flowers. Um, and it's, it's, and I just like, I'm looking at the picture now. It's even um, posted on Facebook um, of him. He was dressed in black. He had his cap on um, in his Nikes and he's mowing his lawn, the mowing the lawn. And I thought that was so endearing to me because as a man, you have to kind of think to yourself, right, you don't have a lot of money, but you're trying to do the best that you can for your girlfriend and you want to make the day special as possible. And I think this kid deserves the, the Extraordinary Person of the Week award. Um, it was very, very deserving. And I think that he um, empathizes that, you know, he's got to work hard at a relationship. And this is what you have to kind of do, really, to do uh, to do something just to make them happy. Um, I have to respect his effort um, because there's not many people that are that's out there for him, you know, that's like them, like him. But we wish that there was more people like Cody. And I look at him, and I can't think nothing else with respect to him for what he's been able to do. So he is my extraordinary person of the week award. Um, so, I'm going to end this podcast. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, next week, I will be posting something a little bit more um, serious than this. And uh, I just figured Valentine's Day would be the topic to talk about. So, I'll catch you guys on the next one. Is Have a great, great weekend, whatever you're doing. Peace out.